This week I recommended Still House Lake by Rachel Kane. And I read it. Let's get into the review. <laughs> Before going into the plot of this book, something that's just very important to note is that the cover uh, gives the impression that it's a horror book. You have this like misty lake and some mysterious figure rowing. It's not a horror book, but into the plot, the whole idea is there's this family and the dad is revealed to be a serial killer, which is a big shock because they've been living together for over 10 years and the mom just didn't know. She ends up having to flee from her previous house after being uh, essentially tried as an accomplice to him and then acquitted later, but people still don't believe that she wasn't involved because it's hard to believe that someone could not notice that within their own household. They have to adopt new identities, they end up in their newest location, Still House Lake, where nothing is what it seems. This book is certainly a page turner. You have a lot of moments where you're very unsure about what's going to happen next and who, like, the people that are involved in this woman's life, like, what are their intentions and what are they really there for? One word for this book is page turner, another one is cliché. This book is a big cliché. It's good, it's interesting, but you know what's gonna happen. You have a writing style that at times can be a bit cliché because there's a lot of elements to it that are either repetitive or they're kind of related in this way that makes it seem like <laughs> it's, it's just a bit of a shallow connection. The characters are one-dimensional. Except for the kids. The kids were great characters, kudos to that. The kids were probably some of the best kid characters I've seen in a while. The mom's identity was being a strong mom. You feed her a line, you know what she's gonna say back. The mother, uh, Gina initially, and then Gwen later on, her having this like strong mommy vibe, I would say, that's described as. And it's, it's really nice at times because it gives you this inspirational kind of joy for these people, for surviving their adversities and pushing past all their like trials and tribulations but at the same time it's it's a bit repetitive in that they keep it's it's mentioned every scene at least 10 times and the fact that this book is a mystery in fact uh makes it important that you can't tell what's about to happen before it does you can tell what's going to happen before it does but there are some very good twists that no one can really expect and those were really good I think the writing style was actually, like, kind of complicated compared to what you would expect from a story like this, so I thought that was very good. It wasn't as simple as this happened, that happened, and then this happened. It, it goes into thoughts, it goes into flashbacks, it's not 100% linear. Something else I appreciated about this book was that the author did use a lot of more recent events to kind of structure her book. For example, referencing, like, police brutality, or they had feminist issues, and it, I felt like at least that part of modern society being integrated into the book was was nice. Overall, if I was to rate this book, I'm gonna give this a 3.25 out of 5 because I think it's above average, but I think the cliché-ness is its biggest downfall. I would give this book a 3.25, and really the only reason it's like a lower rating is because of the uh, kind of critiques that I mentioned but overall I did on, at base level I did really enjoy this book and that I like couldn't put it down this book is good but you could roll your eyes while reading it every once in a while while I was reading it I was invested and then after it I didn't really have any kind of lingering uh, takeaway. Do check out Still House Lake, it's part of a series, and the next book will come out at some point, and I think it's worth a look at.